Well, I'd like to welcome everybody back to Alabama Care. Today we're doing a virtual vMix uh, broadcast and we have Mr. Joe Ray, the Executive Director of Adaptive Aquatics in Wilsonville, Alabama with us today. And we're going to be talking about water activities for persons with a disability. And at this point, I'd like to hand it back over. Mr. Ray, if you would introduce yourself. Hey there, guys. Hey, uh, my name is Joe Ray. I'm uh, Executive Director of Adaptive Aquatics here in Wilsonville, Alabama on Lay Lake. I teach uh, disabled children, disabled adults, and wounded veterans how to do water skiing and other uh, various water sports. And we always like to ask, are you originally from Alabama? No, actually, I was born in Texas. I was an Army brat, and uh, we moved around from uh, location to location. Uh, uh, and but ended up in Alabama in around second grade, and but lived here most of my life. So I'd say pretty awesome. much I'm from Alabama. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Is it Roll Tide or War Eagle for your college sports team? Well, you know what? I kind of look at both of them as they're both Alabama teams. I kind of lean towards whoever's got the best chance for national championship. Uh, I do have uh, closer ties to the Alabama team because I've done some um, programs for the uh, butcher basketball team that's located down there, uh, helping maybe do some um, water skiing uh, for some of the basketball players down there. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, and uh, so uh, adaptive aquatics, I have a family member um, that has some physical limitations. And she, in the last couple of years, has started going to the Lakeshore Foundation uh, and using their pool uh, to kind of stretch her body and her muscles. But I never really thought of her getting any ex extraneous activity um, other than that in aquatics. But from what I've seen with adaptive aquatics, you guys really take it to another level. If you could give us a little bit of history of adaptive aquatics. Okay, uh, Adaptive Aquatics was founded in 1980 uh, by Phil Martin. Uh, it, he actually uh, um, started the uh, uh, Adaptive Aquatics because he was um, uh, growing up, uh, he kind of was helping some, uh, some kids in his school uh, they had special needs and uh, he wanted to get them out on the water so that's kind of was his inspiration to starting adaptive aquatics so that's kind of how it all began and then i be i kind of came upon the scene uh, as a skier with adaptive aquatics in 1982 so i i began uh, with phil as a skier and then kind of went from there uh, as learning to be an instructor with Phil and then eventually um, taking over the program from him uh, after he actually was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Um, so Adaptive Aquatics has been around for almost 40 years. Uh, 41 to be exact. 41 years, <laughs> yeah. that's amazing. 41 um, years. And one of, the thing, one of the things that uh, comes to my mind uh, just First off is that my family member is my aunt um, and she has trouble getting around and she definitely cannot swim on her own. Um, she needs assistance in pretty much everything she does. So as someone that's kind of responsible for her care, um, one of my first things would be, I don't wanna put her in a situation where she can't stand. Uh, do you get a lot of those types of fears from individuals and family members? Oh yeah, you know, I do a lot of, basically convincing um uh family members that you know we can safely ski your child we can basically uh ski any type of disability um, the skis that we use are adaptable we basically adapt to the the child's uh, disability uh we look at their situation and we can uh it's it's called a sit ski in other words we sit them in the ski we have different uh, ways that we can uh, adapt the ski to make it very safe, uh, to make it to where they don't have to hold on to anything. They 
basically have ways to um, uh, keep their self upright. Uh, we have outriggers on the ski so the ski does not fall over. Um, most of the time when once they get done with their skiing they come back and once we uh, drop them off to the, at the exit dock uh, half the time the hair's not even wet. <laughs> <laughs> they're, yeah. they're laughing and, and their ha hair's not even wet. <laughs> so I'll say, dunk them. The hair's not even wet. Dunk them. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, when you say outriggers there, it makes me think of almost training wheels for a uh, water ski. They are, they are kind of like training wheels. They're basically two trick skis uh, that we um, put on aluminum bars that only kind of on the outside of the ski that keeps the ski from flipping over you know, from side so it keeps it straight and then that gives the skier some sense of stability and you know and that as they advance and some skiers never will advance beyond the outriggers but if they do then we can actually take those outriggers off and then they can actually um, go beyond doing what you know having training what you say training wheels or training skis on and they can go outside the wake you know they can get go beyond the beginner ski and get a much narrower ski and then they can start doing intermediate skiing get faster and then if they want to they can go into competition we can you know as if you see the medals i have back here we can get them into competition, into national competition, world competition, if they want to go to that route. So there are avenues to go beyond, you know, it depends upon their abilities. So, um, you know, there's, there's limitless what you can do. That's amazing. Um, and I was actually going to ask if you would tell us about the medals behind you. Well, um, these guys right here, uh, those are from Australia, I believe. Um, I was on a USA water ski team for about mm, probably 15 years. Uh, I've won 13 world championships. Uh, I have six world records. Um, and uh, there's other medals that I have on the walls back here. Um, but, um, you know, I was just very blessed and uh, I've done a, a variety of wheelchair athletics in my career everything from wheelchair basketball to track and field to tennis and you name it but water skiing was my love and it was probably what I was the best at so and again it, had it not been for Phil Martin and Dapt Aquatics I never would have uh, realized that dream and you know and I tell that to the kids, you know, I never, ever thought that I would have been a world champion in anything, much less, you know, a 13 time world champion in something. So yeah, you just yeah. never know what you can accomplish. You know, so. I love that. Um, at 13 world championships, six world records is amazing. If you don't mind me asking, if you had to pick like one or two of your favorite uh, world uh, records, uh, that you'd like to highlight, what would be a couple of those? It was my first one, if you want to know the truth. Uh, yes, sir. And truthfully, the first one was in Australia, and that was in 2001. And, and I didn't get into competition heavily until I was 40. <laughs> I'm 63 now, okay. I just retired from competition when I was 50, 59, I think. Okay, I just retired like a couple years ago. In 2001, my father had just passed, and um, I had when did the competition at there, and it was very windy. And believe it or not, usually when you ski, it's very smooth. Well, it was not smooth. We're talking white caps out there. So everybody was was not skiing very well. They were falling. Nobody was skiing at all. And I had actually come in to the competition because of some boat mount functions and stuff. I just barely made the finals. And I was in last place. 
So when I went into that finals, I was in last place and I watched everybody that day kind of fail. You know, there's only a few people that able to actually run the course that day. So I made up my mind. I was second to last in that day. And I just went into a tent and ran that course in my mind over and over and over again. So when I got out on the course, I went out there and I didn't let anything stop me. I ran that course and then came back through it and ran it again. And then I ran it again. And then when I finally, you know, eventually you're going to miss a booby. So I, eventually I did miss one. But at that point, I had set the world record. And, you know, I said I had a, and I'm skiing and among these white caps, and everybody was amazed. And then back then, I had was one of the first skiers to hit the maximum speed at the very short rope length back then. So it was a pretty major accomplishment, and you know, especially during the that certain weather there. So, I mean, I had that medal and that world record on my shelf, um, up here on the wall so yeah that that one always sticks in my mind always yeah that's amazing going from second to last place to world record holder on a very windy day and i uh yeah. have never done much water skiing i just don't have much experience with it but i have done a decent amount of sailing um and uh sailboat racing and i know when it's choppy out there it you know we enjoy the wind because of the sailing but it makes a very turbulent uh, experience on race day uh, to be able to, to weather those white caps as you're saying yeah and you know I've always told my my skiers everybody that's that I teach especially in competition I said it doesn't matter how smooth the water is or how rough it is you always ski regardless it doesn't matter what kind of boat you're behind or what whatever you, who's driving it you just go out there and you ski the course like you know you should you know mm -hmm. and you don't think about all the things you cannot control you just go and do what you know what to do you ski and you go have fun and and you'll do well and they always do well so i've, I've had several um of the people that i've taught become national and world champions and i'm very proud of those too and I was very lucky this past year to be inducted into the USA Water Ski and Weight Sports Hall of Fame also. So that was a very, um, very big uh, honor for me. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, that's amazing. Um, and I like how you said the, uh, the visualization. You went into the tent and you visualized that run uh, oh. almost as if everything was perfect, how it would go. And then you went out and executed it. Uh, and I love that mental exercise. I've heard of, um, you know, all types of athletes doing that. It, after you get done a hard workout, uh, laying down and visualizing what a perfect run or a perfect match would be and doing that over and over kind of trains you to be in that uh, position when you get there. And you're like priming yourself for it. Well, I ran it a hundred times in my mind, a hundred times. <laughs> so when I got out there, in real life it was nothing it was it was just it was amazing you know and and it was freezing so i i stripped down all my neoprene i stripped down to my summer just my vest and my shorts and that's it and i mean i was freezing out there and I, I, <laughs> so i was i mean everybody was i mean that was that was amazing. everybody was amazed so anyway yeah. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Um, and I'd like to ask you a little bit about um, some of the equipment. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and show a video that you had professionally made about adaptive aquatics. Um, so I'll kind of prime Clifton for that. Um, but before we get to that, it sounds like um, the equipment that you're using, you were talking about the outriggers. Is that uh, most of the equipment that you use, is it kind of made uh, there on your campus? Or are these kind of equipment that anybody can go to Amazon and purchase? No, a lot of this stuff is very specialized stuff. Um, we've always had problems with manufacturers making our sit ski equipment because one is very specialized. Two, 
there's not a big market for it. So to find manufacturers that want to make it has always been a problem. They want to accept the liability of making it has always been a problem. So, you know, um, there's only a few that make it, uh, but at least there's a few guys that, you know, we here for years, we've gotten some quality guys. We've made some push, you know, several, you know, including me and some other guys have made pushes to some of the manufacturers to try to convince them that, look, you need to help us, you know, keep this stuff alive for what we do. And, and we show them what we do and we've convinced them to make some, you know, quality skis for us. So there are some quality skis out there that we use. And I have some new skis that we just replaced some 35 euro equipment with just a few years ago. And thank God that these guys have, you know, come on board and, and helped us. And, and we really appreciate that they've done that. So, um, there are companies that are making stuff now and you can actually go out to the uh, USA water ski and wake sports um, websites and go to the disable tab and there are a link of uh, adaptive water ski equipment uh, providers out there uh, and that make the skis and also the seats that that we do and I mean the outriggers I mean we can make those and there's probably you know you know, they're free diagrams to make the outriggers. That's pretty easily made, you know, so. But, yeah, uh, and I imagine that the uh, manufacturers, they like to see how their equipment is being used <clears throat> and to kind of get that reaction back. And that will help uh, support them to continue uh, making these these types of adjustments to the equipment. Um, and that video that you guys had made, very professional video, we'd like to go ahead and share that now so that everybody else can see uh, exactly what that looks like. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get muted, and then that video will go ahead and start so you guys can see it. Okay. My name is Joe Ray. I'm the Executive Director of Adaptive Aquatics. What we do here is we teach disabled children, disabled adults, and wounded warrior veterans various water sports. I had a car wreck, paralyzed from the waist down, and I met a gentleman named Phil Martin and he ran an organization called Adaptive Aquatics. And he said, come out and ski, Joe. I got out there and I skied and I loved it. I said, man, this is great. Really, it was a life-changing experience for me. There's a lot of stories that bring us to tears. Families watch the skiers out there and sometimes it's the first time they see them doing something that they never thought they could do. I had a little girl, the family said she's nonverbal. She don't laugh, she don't smile, she don't do anything. She started laughing. <laughs> And they said that child laughed for six solid hours after that. It's a stepping stone to something bigger and better in your life. We're not just about water skiing. We're about you finding yourself and, and finding out you can be more and do more. Thank you, Toyota, for all you've done. And thank all the supporters of Adapt Aquatics because you really are the ones that, uh, that do it. Uh, that was an amazing video. Uh, I love the uh, the six hours of smiling and laughing uh, and just the happiness that can come from trying something new. Yeah, that was um, a little girl that came to us and uh, again, nonverbal. Um, the lady, the mother came up to me and she goes like, you're not going to believe this. But she goes like, she's, she's, smiling she's laughing you know and she said i took video in the bathroom and um and we had t taken pictures in the boat too and i and and like i said i i showed a picture on the the video there of her smiling also and i go like and it just shows you the power of you know of what we do and you know we we're just you know, we just don't do it for one person. We, it, it's thousands of people that we've done over these 41 years that, you know, that this organization has, has you know, has done, you know. So, yeah, I'm just very blessed to, to be a part of this. And, you know, you know I, heck, I was one of those people. <laughs> you know?
<laughs> so. and, and I love um, it's a totally different um, and I've been in the water before and I've been water skiing uh, but it's totally different from just going to my pool and working out at my local YMCA uh, it's a different experience and uh, for my family member she is nonverbal so I would love to see her reaction now I, I do have to say I think she's going to be very timid in the beginning. I think she might be wigging out a little bit because it's something new. Um, and yeah, she'll, like yeah, I said, she'll be yeah. yeah. Um, as, and I think as long as I can be there close to her and kind of coach her through that, uh, once she gets up and going, I think she's going to love it uh, because she, one of her favorite things to do is car rides. She loves yeah. to get in the car yeah. and just go for an hour long car ride. Doesn't matter what's going on. Doesn't matter if it's sunny or rainy doesn't matter but she loves the feeling of the motion and kind of watching the world uh through you know going through that so i'm yeah, hoping so that's, that's, the that's the thing a few years ago we used to do a camp down at children's harbor for magic moments and uh it was during memorial day which was probably not the best time in the world to do a, a camp down at children's harbor but there was a kid down there and he was again nonverbal, and it was the first time I had someone in the boat. They had a really long lens camera, and they took a picture of this kid. And this kid was just laid back, and he just had this smile on his face. And you know, and I talked to the parent, and I, after the fact, and I go like, well, "What do you think he was thinking?" You know, and he goes like, "Well, you know, he's not aware of much, but." you could just tell that he was, he knew what was going on, you know? And like you just said, he knew that motion. He knew that something was going on that he enjoyed, something that made a difference in his life at that moment. So mm -hmm. I, I get what you're saying. And the great thing is, is um, when we do put some, a kid in the water gets their boat, okay, and see that first hand. And it's as much life changing for that parent as it is for that kid back there. And yeah, and and that's that's what I love to see because I feel like you know half the time I'm doing you know counseling in the boat as much as I'm doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> a little, little bit of counseling to the parents there saying, hey, why don't you just take a little step back and see, you know, what your kid can show you they can do. And as a, as a family member, it, it really is assuring to me to see those, I'll call them almost trimaran sleds where you have the, the one ski in the middle and then the two skis on the outside reminds me of a trimaran, uh, but looks very um, supportive and it, it not like it's going to tip over at any point. And they... Uh, I feel like my family member would be out of the water quite a bit where the water is not hitting her on the chest, uh, but, she, you know, she's just kind of going along on top of it. Yep. Yeah, so, and, you know, we have them back there behind the boat, but we also, you, you don't see it, but we have a jet ski riding beside them with two lifeguards too. So they're they're being monitored very closely. So at any moment, you know, we're, we're watching them. You know, you're watching them. And we're also we have two lifeguards riding very closely beside them so we're we're making sure that you know everything's safe back there and we're communicating between me and the lifeguards back there to make sure that everything's fine and then you know we're just taking a a nice ride on the lake there you know we're, we're heck yeah around. Um, now, I, I have a question. Would I be able to be on one of those jet skis so I could be closer to my aunt, if possible? We, we might could put you on one. I'll just go we on the back and, and live. We might, could, we might could bend the rules a little bit. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'd like to get some uh, shots for um, you know her mom and uh, her sisters uh, and just be there uh, a little bit closer if she did start to uh, wig out uh, or anything, kind of calm her down. Um, but yeah. I, I think she would really enjoy it there. Um, can you, and I'd can also, you ski? Can you ski? I can ski. I can ski. I haven't done it in a long time because I feel like every time 
I go skiing, I mess up an ankle or I mess up a knee, uh, I, and, and the skis go flying over we there. We don't need that. <laughs> so I might just take a trip on the, the back of the jet ski and be close if possible. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd also like to shout out Mr. Bob Lujano, um, who I saw in the video there. Um, and yep. uh, he, he was on a broadcast with us yesterday talking about um, some things that Lakeshore is doing uh, for the upcoming Paralympics and getting everybody hyped about those. Uh, so it's great to see him out there as well. Yeah, Bob, uh, when he, he skis with us, um, when he falls, we, we change his name to Skip. <laughs> see, that's when you know you're good friends is when you can kind of prod each other like that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you know. It's good. Um, now, I'd like to ask, you said you did, uh, you participated and were competitive in some other sports. You mentioned basketball there um, and other ones. Have you been involved with the Lakeshore Foundation and some of their Paralympic uh, sports? Well, I, I played on the Lakeshore Foundation uh, basketball team for 33 years. Um, oh, wow. I made the the... So Korea Paralympic team in 88, but I would, wasn't able to go. I injured my shoulder really badly. I was not able to, to make that team. I was asked to try out for the basketball team, but again, my shoulder was injured and, you know, I, I tried out for it, but heck, I couldn't do anything. So, but yeah, you know, I never was a, after that, my shoulder never was really good enough. I didn't didn't race that much longer after that. So I never really went on a Paralympic team. And then, you know, yeah. as far as F water skiing, we'd never had, you know, water skiing is not in the, ever been in the Olympics anyway. It's not. Um, is it in the, nor Olympic sport. is, is um, water skiing, uh, Paralympic water skiing, is that in the world games? No, there, there is no, it, it's a world championship. It's a world championship. Um, sport but it's not paralympic or olympic sport i didn't know because we're having we're having the world games here oh okay i got yeah we are yeah that's the world i see what you're saying no it's not not olympic it's a difference yeah yeah um uh so i have a a question about um, the olympics is world competition you know there's there's the distinction there um, I didn't think about the uh, the motor driven, uh, but that that brings up yep. a very good point there. And about yeah, how many? Point, th- I, at some I'm point sorry. They'll have laser laser guided boats. You know, they're they're working on that. Uh, they can they solve the the speed control problem, uh, but you know, right now they still got a. a, a, a human driving a boat and they're they're working on laser driving boats so as soon as they get that figured out you know maybe we'll see laser driven boat sounds a lot like 2001 the space odyssey (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's pretty far out there um now how many um individuals would you say that adaptive aquatics serves over the course of a year well, I mean, since the pandemic, we didn't serve hardly any, but <laughs> um, in our heyday, when we were really serving a lot of people, I mean, we we maxed out about 1,600 people, uh, but we, we haven't gotten near those numbers in the last few years. I mean, we were, we've been well below 1,000 these last few years, but, you know, we still put up good numbers, you know. It's just that... We're not having the schools coming because of the pandemic, you know, that's taken away a lot of our numbers right now. Yeah, a thousand sixteen hundred people introducing them to something that's possible. I feel like does a lot for the individual, even though let's just say they come one time for an hour or a half day to show them what's possible and break down some limitations that they might have mentally um, and to show their family and their parents. Uh, what's possible to to help stop some limiting beliefs for their children? Uh, that that goes over a lifetime. Yeah. 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 And um, when someone might call and be a little bit nervous if 
uh, their disability can be accommodated. What do you say, or what types of disabilities can adaptive aquatics accommodate? We we pretty much can ski anybody. I, I tell people, you know, I asked them, I'm going like, here, seen that movie Bernie's Weekend at Bernie's? I said, we can ski yeah. Bernie. I mean, <laughs> we put him on the outriggers. I mean, <laughs> no, we can ski pretty much any disability, uh, especially with our new equipment because we have our, our new equipment have these um, pretty adjustable uh, cages or seats on them now. And with uh, these high rise uh, backrest on them, so we can pretty much ski just about any disability these days. Yeah, that's and amazing. And uh, able to. the youngest ski child we've ever skied is two years old, and the oldest person we've ever skied has been, you know, well into their nineties. So you we, just beat me to my next question. I was right. going to ask about the age range. So you'll go all the as, as long as anybody's interested, you'll make it happen. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't discriminate, and I don't, uh, I don't say we can't. We can't's not in my vocabulary, pretty much. I like that. Um, now you guys are located in Wilsonville, Alabama, so pretty central to the state, and I would say pretty central yes. to the southeast there. Um, yes, we are, and, and we have, we actually have a lot of people that that travel to us from a, a lot of different places, you know. Um, uh, we've actually had people from, you know, outside the Southeast and, um, from other countries, um, uh, you know, just, I mean, not from the other that make a habit of coming here, but we've just had other visitors that, yeah, I've known that ski with us, you know, but, uh, um, yeah, we're well, we're well known. We're one of the longest running original water sports organizations in the country um we're one of the first because um, really adaptive water skin is it's not that old it was um it, it was really only created uh, probably in the um, 70s so we were kind of created not long after that so yeah still very very different. young sport Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. And what does it look like? Um, so let's say an individual or maybe a family is really wanting to try us like myself. Uh, what does it look like if I call Adaptive Aquatics and speak to you or one of your staff members and say, hey, uh, I have a family member. Staff that members? I think <laughs> 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 staff members? <laughs> <laughs> but what does the process look like if uh, you one. know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if I call and I say, "Hey, I have a family member that uh, I think would enjoy this experience," uh, what does that process look like for her and for us um, once once I talk to you on the phone? Well, I mean, we just we kind of evaluate. You know, a lot of people call and go like, "Hey, uh, do you have a swimming pool?" And I go, "No, no, we don't. We don't do teach have swimming classes." I said, "We teach water skiing." You know, a lot of them look at our name and think we have a a big swimming pool area. And then I direct people towards Electoral Foundation to to you know try to do that with. Well, once we get past that, you know, I, I say, like, if you want to learn how to water ski, we can get you out on the lake, you know, and uh, if you want to do individual sessions, I give them a date and uh, we sign them up for a time. Uh, there's no charge for our services. I raise money all winter long, and pretty much all summer. We're mainly funded by uh, just donations and uh, Grants that I taken right here and there, and you know I take no salary. We we have no staff. It's all volunteer staff. So we're a very lean organization, and uh, so uh, and that's pretty much it. So we just once they sign up for a session, they come here. They don't have to bring anything. We have the life vests and everything they need to get them on the water, and uh, you know it's. If Lakeshore Foundation is running, like this weekend, Lakeshore Foundation running an event at Children's Harbor. So 
if they're in an event, we'll go there and we'll be the water ski provider, basically. They'll they'll say, hey, come run our event for us, and we'll be there running that. Last, not just past weekend, but two weekends ago, we were down at Children's Harbor running the Smiley Bifta uh, group down there. So, um, so we yeah, that's amazing. Events for other groups. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to reiterate for uh, anybody thinking about doing this, there is no cost to the individual or the family for this experience. No. It's about a one hour session. Uh, you get to try something new. Now, I will say though, that uh, you mentioned Adaptive Aquatics is um, kind of funded through the community. So if you had a great experience uh, or you feel compelled, please donate. Uh, uh, Adaptive Aquatics is a 501c3, correct? That's right. Um, so those cool t-shirts too. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to put the Adaptive Aquatics website in the comments. Um, and I've looked yeah. at those t-shirts so you guys can go through and support Adaptive Aquatics by purchasing a t-shirt uh, online or, you know, maybe when you're there in person after you go water skiing. Um, but if you're worried about, you know, hey, I'm going to go out to the lake. Oh, we need a boat. We need all this adaptive equipment. We're not sure if this works. All of that's taken care of by Mr. Ray um, and, and the volunteers there. And it's at no cost to you. Uh, so there's really no reason if you're if you enjoy the water and you enjoy moving to get out there and try it. Now uh, this does not run year round. I understand there are certain months out of the year uh, that Adaptive Aquatics is able to to do this. Yeah, we only run. We're usually open um, sometimes late April, uh, usually May through uh, end of September. Sometimes we have run through October. It depends on how warm it is. Um, and also how successful the football teams are, because once the football teams start going on, attendance drops way down. So, <laughs> but again, hey, you know, there's no one on the lake either. So <laughs> the water's really smooth that time of year too. <laughs> yeah, so that's it's a like good skiing. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't Ooh, feel like catching the game that time of year. <laughs> If you don't feel like catching the football game, definitely go out on the lake that day. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, now, the other thing is uh, you mentioned it's really um, yourself that's kind of running everything, but you do have uh, volunteers that come in because, uh, I do. you know, you have to have people close to the individual that is water skiing. And as I've uh, read that these uh, individuals are AWSA certified. So these aren't just regular volunteers that are coming from the community. These are individuals that know about the water and how to react. And if you would give us a little bit of background about what that means and kind of uh, secure some of the fears or wipe away some of the fears for anybody that would be coming in about that. Yeah, when most of my, like, my helpers are lifeguards, they're certified lifeguards. So, I mean, the, the people riding on the jet skis back there, they're, they're all going to be certified lifeguards. You know, they're also uh, certified in CPR. Um, they're certified as, uh, uh, well, they probably don't call them AWSA now. It's probably USA Water Ski and Weight Sports. You know, they change the names of these organizations so much these days, you know. Um, uh, coaches now. But every so yeah. we, we have all those certifications these days, you know. Yeah, so everybody that's involved with your experience there uh, is very well qualified. You're surrounding yourself with people that know what's going on, know what to do in case uh, something goes higher. Um, you know, they're going to be right by your side there. So there's really no worry for you as an individual or for parents and family members. Um, Absolutely. If, if they have any of that. Um, and I'd like to ask um, any upcoming events that you would like to highlight? Um, I know you mentioned there's a camp this weekend. I don't know if that's still open for enrollment. But anything in the next few weeks or a month or two out that you would like to highlight and really encourage uh, the community to get behind and support for adaptive uh, aquatics and, and water events? Now, the camp this weekend is through Lakeshore Foundation. I believe they have uh, control of that, and I believe they already have all the families enrolled, you know, maxed out on that one. Uh, I do have some slots open for next weekend here so you just have to contact me uh, my phone number here is 
7519 if you'd like to call that number. Uh, um, so the individual has to be disabled to, to be able to ski. So, um, But if I've got a slot open, we'd love to have you come out and, and experience the adapted water skiing and uh, maybe get you out on the water and uh, let you see what it's like, you know. <laughs> Yeah, get that full yeah. experience, and we'll put your number you, in the chat as well. Get you hooked. Get you hooked. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it is. You're hooked after the first one, and then the next thing you know, you're buying a laser boat and all this cool equipment. Uh, well, let me let me tell you this. Okay, so I see what a couple week, three weeks ago, whatever, I had a clinic with um, some of my repeats. In other words, kids. They they used to be five and six year old kids that I skied okay well they're not five and six year old kids anymore they're 27 year olds now <laughs> so that tells you <laughs> and, you know one how old I am and two you know how much they love the skiing so there they yeah are. he's still skiing it's kind of you know, when they're 20 something year olds but. And it's getting hooked there and starting at a young age, but you can start at any age. Um, you know, I didn't yeah. start uh, playing hockey till I was 28. I'm 35 now and uh, I enjoyed it. It's a great exercise, but uh, no matter what age, you can go out and enjoy it. And, uh, you know, if you if you really enjoy it, keep going back. Uh, it's, a, it's a service that uh, Mr. Ray is providing here in the community of Alabama. So definitely take advantage of it. Um, and I'd like to... Um, ask we mentioned um some of the other uh paralympic sports that you participated in um you know through lakeshore or other things there uh are you excited about the, the olympics that are going on now and the upcoming paralympics is there a specific sport or athlete that you're following uh not really i i'd be interested to watch the basketball to you know and I, and there's you know, the rugby, I like to watch it. There's one athlete that's on the rugby team that actually I skied back early on. And it was actually when he was, uh, his name's Jeff Butler. And uh, I actually skied him when he was uh, kind of first injured. And he kind of got out of skiing, but uh, he got into rugby. And, but see, it's not just that skiing is, the sport that this person is going to get into it's like i said before and i said it in a video it's just a stepping stone to something bigger and better in your life so he might have used that as a stepping stone to what he's doing now in rugby and since then he's become a paralympic athlete and and went on to win paralympic gold in multiple times so i really enjoy watching him seeing him excel in the sport that he's found that he's great at you know you know whether or not i had a small part in that you know who knows but you know i just think that it was a small stepping stone yeah and, and the way that you're you're going over that now i feel like um this should be a required activity for all children uh, that might have a physical uh, disability in middle school or at the very least high school to get that experience and grow that confidence? Well, I think any sport, uh, you should have at least some sport because sports teaches you a lot of things. Sports teaches you how to win, how to lose, teamwork, you know, it teaches you so many different things. So it does doesn't does teach you one thing. It teaches you multiple things. So I, I think yeah, I couldn't. Very, agree. Sports are very important. I couldn't agree more with you. You have to be active. You have to challenge your body physically, and you have to challenge yourself mentally. Uh, sports are a great way to do that with a good group of people. Uh, I get behind what you just said, a hundred percent. There. Um, yeah, well, I kind of well, I, yeah, I remember. Let me say this one one last thing. I remember seeing a banner. At a wheelchair basketball tournament in look um, in Kentucky one year, and it said today's athletes are tomorrow's leaders. I firmly believe that. Yeah, I agree, and it's like if you're 
uh, when you want to work with other people or, or you're hiring, you want to make sure that they're active in the community. You know, whether that's sports or whether they're getting out and, and going hiking, uh, going camping, that kind of stuff. You love to see that um, because it's it's growing for that individual. So um, is there anything that we haven't talked about uh, that you think an individual or a family could benefit from hearing? No, I just think that, you know, uh, I know that there are lots of resource gaps out there and it's hard to um, know where to find them, but just search, you know, um, I'm just an avenue, you know, but there, there's plenty of them. Uh, you had talked before about, you know, uh, American Village, you know, um, but there's so many different places in Alabama to visit, to go see, um, so just seek them out. So I'm, like I said, I'm just one small um, best kept secret here in Alabama. So um, just just seek them out because we're, we're all over. So I mean, I'm, I'm just one of, of many. Well, we appreciate you being here with us this morning. And uh, I've been in Alabama for almost five years now. And I can say the outdoor adventures um, here are just astronomical. There are things to do outside as long as the weather's nice, especially in kind of the early spring, late fall when the weather's not too hot. Um, I mean, you can explore Alabama all around. So uh, thank you for pointing that out and re, you know, reinforcing that. Make the initiative. There are tons of things to do. Go visit Adaptive Aquatics. <clears throat> Call Mr. Ray, set up an appointment. He has some open slots next weekend. Uh, and I will be calling you, Mr. Ray, here um, probably in the next week to set up a uh, time slot for my family member, my aunt. Absolutely. Look forward to it. Well, Mr. Mr. Ray, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, meeting you this morning. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and end the broadcast. And we'll kind of just give a wave to each one of our cameras. And Clifton will go ahead and take us out there. So we'll say see you guys next time.